Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. It is me Gideon, also known as Gideon Slide, and I'm your creatively fit coach, right? <laughs> so I decided to try something new. Some of my friends have said they would love to see more of my face and in my studio setting. So I've decided to just switch things around a little bit and to share with you face to face as we get into today's exercise. So the prompt for this week is beach and ocean. That is sort of where we're going. And I've got my beautiful art journal ready, another blank page to fill. And I'm just gonna use some masking tape and tape that off and we'll get right into it. But before we do that, I decided to just light a candle and just set some intention for the day because you know, the world is in such an interesting place right now. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, will be voting this year, including us here in South Africa. We're voting the day after tomorrow. And uh, I'm just praying for a smooth and peaceful transition and that we as a beautiful rainbow nation can grow and move forward together and uh, just be a little bit more inclusive and tolerant of each other and uh, that we can just use our beautiful um, nature that we are to just show the world how it can be done. So if you are in a country that's voting this year, I'm also thinking of you and sending you some love and light and positive energy to a very stressful situation. So that is my wish today. And the way that I deal with the stress is to go to the beach. <laughs> but you know what? I don't live near the beach. I'm in Gauteng and it's quite far away from the beach. But you know what? In our art practice, we can go to the beach instantly. So I did use the color cube. Now, if you don't know what the color cube is, oh, let me just pick it up. I should have prepared for that, but it's on the floor. So here's my color cube and it's a wonderful tool from Sarah Renee Clark. You can find her on the internet and I use her tool to just guide me when I don't know what to paint and I don't know which colors to use because there's just so many options that can be overwhelming, right? So what I did was I drew this card, which is card number 70. The number is at the top there. And we have a beautiful sunrise over the ocean and there's a beautiful rocky shore here. So I can just imagine I'm sitting on these rocks, looking at the ocean, seeing the sunrise over the ocean. Isn't that just beautiful? And we have this beautiful limited palette. We have here a beautiful creamy pink. We have a golden yellow here. We have a burgundy, a black and a beautiful cool gray. So that is what I'm going to be using today to paint the scene. And to make it even more challenging for me, I'm going to paint it very quickly. Speed painting. <laughs> Why do we do speed painting? Because, you know, it helps us to really look at our reference material, uh, mix the colors correctly, and sort of a more direct kind of abstraction kind of method in my world. It really helps me to paint faster and not to fiddle too much with brush marks that I make. And sometimes in the end, that adds to the beauty of the sort of end product. So it really is a good thing to learn to paint faster and not to fuss too much about the details. So that is exactly what we're going to do. So give me a second. I'm going to turn the camera around and I'll show you exactly how. So join me now. So for today's exercise, I have decided to play with my color cube and I have selected card number 70 which is a beautiful ocean um, and beach scene but the beach is rocky and we've got a early morning sunrise over the water so I decided for today's prompt I'm going to be playing with this color cube and um, these will be our colors so we've got on here a creamy pink we've got a golden color We've got a dark burgundy, we've got a black, and we've got a cool gray. So that is what this little picture is all about. And we are going to be painting that today in a speed painting fashion. Why do I want to do speed painting? Simply because I think it really helps you to focus in on what you see and trying to mix the correct color for that brush stroke. And um, also, 
it saves time because you know this is in my art journal so i don't need to frame it and pack and, and sell it or anything like that <laughs> it's just an exercise in my art journal and that is what our creative practice is all about so i believe as a creatively fit coach when you come to a setting where you want to practice your creativity it's good to give yourself a challenge and set some parameters and then to go for it because you know on any other day you can work on something that you want to produce for a frame or for your home or to sell but if that is not your thing, if you're not into being a professional artist, you just want to be a hobbyist, or you just want to have a creative practice to reap the benefits of having a creative practice, then that is all excellent and wonderful. I do try to sort of offer something for my wide range of community, starting all the way from people that just want to paint for themselves all the way to professional artists that likes my approach to things. So that's wonderful. So I've got my palette here, and I've got here... Uh, what is this? Let me, I don't want to lie to you. Let me make sure. Oh, it's right here in front of me. So we have here a medium yellow or a cat yellow medium. I have a very light, creamy, pale pastel yellow. I have a rosy pink, which is also um, a pastel pink. And that will basically represent these two colors. But I also see what I will need in my image there. Then I have a zinc mixing white, and that just helps me to mix colors without making it too opaque and light. I've got a medium neutral gray, which I will cool down myself. I've got a titanium white, and then I've got a raw amber, and I also dispensed a, a cadmium red deep, and I also have a violet because that's gonna help me to create this burgundy color that we have here. And I also have Mars black. So that is basically, oh, this is, sorry, this is lamp black. So those are the colors that I have dispensed for myself. I'm not gonna set a timer, but I am gonna work rather quickly on this board. And that's why I've also prepared the board already. And what you see here in my art journal is um, a page that I prepared with some masking tape so that we have a nice clean edge. And what I've basically mixed was just a little bit of yellow ochre with this medium yellow cad. And um, I allowed it to dry, but before it dried, I sort of just used my um, wooden skewer. And I just basically plotted in the scene that we have on this card number 70 from the color cube, if you want to play it along and you do have the color cube. So we have some very soft clouds in the background. We've got some um, distant mountains and we've got some rolling seas and some rocks in the foreground and some sea foam um, that is really beautiful. So that is a very nice light scene. I'm going to just set up my card for myself so I can keep looking at it while we are painting. And then I just have a variety of painting brushes ready to rock and roll. And I'm going to start with a big brush. I've got water cans to my left and um, that is always going to be handy and obviously a cup of coffee as well. So without any further ado, I will try to sort of keep you abreast of my mixes as we go. I'm looking at the sky that we have and I'll need to sort of have a gradient ranging from um, a pinky hue into this cooler grey. And then we have this beautiful light yellow and white where the sun sits. So. Let's get into this beautiful light rosa pink and I'm going to bring some of my titanium white into this space. And I'm basically going to work above my sunlight because I can always bring in the light a little bit lighter. And I'm going to paint very painterly. I don't want to necessarily cover everything up on the underneath and I don't want to make this painting look like a printing job. And what I mean with that is I do like with my sort of speed painting kind of exercises to just play and not think too hard about it and not try to really, really make everything look exactly like on my reference painting or reference material, sorry. And painting on paper is, is also quite a different experience because the sort of paper is very thirsty. So it can give you this bit of a chalky kind of finish. So if you struggle with that, you can always just dip your brush in a bit of water and you can also add a little bit of glazing medium in order to sort of get a little bit more of a flow. Right, so I'm going to just pay attention to my lines. 
And this is also a great exercise to sort of help you think about the directionality of your brush marks so that it's also helpful um, in communicating to the viewer what it is that you are painting. I just brought in a little bit of that gray and now we're going to cool that down. I'm going to dip the little corner of my brush into some violet and bring that into my gray. So that's sort of going to be my blue. That's a lot of violet, Gideon. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. So this whole sort of mission is all about having a good um, exercise in color mixing and in working with a very particular kind of color scheme so that you don't dispense the whole range of paint that is available um, to yourself out there, but to work with this spectrum of five colors in order to have a very nice cohesive kind of, um, what do you call it, harmonious painting in the end with a successful color scheme. And that's what I like about it. There we go. We've got a beautiful gray. Giving us a nice streaky sky. I quite like that. All right, I'm going to rinse out. The nice thing about acrylic paint is that you can very quickly uh, adapt and or let a layer dry and you can always come and add a little bit more uh, paint on top so it doesn't have to you don't have to freak out about um, you know if you feel like oh my word I'm not getting um, the effect that you're looking for so I'm just mixing this very pale yellow with a little bit of the the yellow medium so we're gonna just create this beautiful space where the sky meets the ocean and just layer that in. This can be quite light. And I've just switched to an angle brush here, a little bit smaller because the zone that I'm painting in is a bit smaller. So we've got this cloud bank in the sky that we can add in a little bit later. And I'm painting very horizontally here and not up and down because that will disrupt the the whole flow of this landscape. I think when you sort of work with a landscape, you have a lot of horizontal lines. And if there's a lot of clouds in the sky, it can help to create sort of a V shape in your clouds to sort of talk about um, depth in your painting. Okay, so we've got this beautiful yellow vibe going up here. I will come back with these grays and purples just now. But like I said, we're gonna speed paint today. Alrighty then, next thing on the list, let's I'm go straight into the titanium white and let's paint our bright, brightest point in our painting in so that that can start drying. And I'm also going to sort of just blend it out a little bit. Just diffuse that light into this beautiful pale yellow. I'm gonna get back into the pale yellow around the sun. And just brighten that up a little bit. It is feeling a bit chalky to me, so I'm going to spray my paints just with a little bit of water just to improve the fluidity of my paint. I hope you guys can see the palette at least a little bit. Here we go. That feels good. I'm going to rinse. Alrighty. Now, these mountains in the background is a very, very soft, peachy color. So I'm going to just dip the toe of my 
angle brush during the red and I'm going to bring in some cat yellow into that mix giving me a beautiful orange and then I'm going to darken it with a little bit of this raw amber so it gives me a beautiful warm brown I think that's too yellow so we can add a little bit more red to it and just keep mixing until you sort of see that you're getting to um, the color that you're seeing um, in your reference material that feels warm enough for me I'm going to add a little bit of my gray to it as well just to mute it down a little bit and that will also lighten it slightly I think a little bit of mixing white as well so that gives me a nice toffee color to start off with here I'm going to just dip the toe of my angle brush in a bit of yellow and then as we progress from this point to that point we will add a little bit more violet to the mix that's pretty let's do a little bit of violet to darken it and to cool it down a bit here at the end Need a little bit more So these things are in the distance, so there's not a lot of detail, so don't overdo it. Okay, let's rip. Now this rock in front of the sun, I think this warm color will do very well. Let's add a bit more yellow to it. It's this little rock right here. You can always come in a bit lighter. I'm going to darken it with a bit more brown and add a bit more to it but an object here in front of the sun will be warmer in its hue than something that's further away and as we move forward with these rocks you'll see me darken it and I will bring in a bit of black into the mix okay to this scene now also looking at my um, wave there's definitely some darker areas inside so I'm also just using this mixture of darkness that I've got here and it helps me to communicate some depth and also um, it helps me to bring harmony to this all awesome closing my studio doors okay okay let's rinse that out now what I want to do is I'm gonna go back to my fan brush it's such a useful tool especially if you need to create some texture so I'm going to use mostly this gray with a little bit of violet mixed into it now I'm gonna add a little bit of titanium white to it as well so we've got a nice sort of mixture here let's start here with this part of the wave is coming over and I'm just working in little clumps I'm not trying to cover everything up I'm just bringing in a little bit of this lighter color as we talk a bit a bit about this wave crashing over I think that's doing it for me we are nearing the end of our painting activating a round brush here getting my clean titanium white back into my Sun and now what I'm gonna do is add a bit of yellow and we're gonna talk a bit about this oh that's very bright 
let's use a round mop brush and just talk a little bit about the rays of the sun. I'm just grabbing some of the white. From my brush. I'm sorry I'm talking in staccato people. It is challenging to paint and talk at the same time. <laughs> I think that was a bit much but you know what here it is. I might even do the same with a little bit of this wave that's been blown. I think that just softens those hairs a little bit. Okay, I think we can clean up our little bright rock. So I'm just mixing my bright yellow, orange, brown color again. Especially here, I really want a nice clean edge. That's pretty. I'm going to do that now here as well. I want a nice clean edge. A bit darker here. Let's make it just a little bit more edgy. Also, rock is not so smooth necessarily. So, like you can see, you can always bring something back that you've lost. Rigor is just a longer filament brush and go into the spiral yellow. Just connect some of these, what do you call it, scholar waves and just bring it down lower over this. Oh, that's cute, Gideon. And let's again brighten up the sun with a pure white. Yes, I think we nailed it. I'm quite happy with that. I think this mountain at the back needs a bit of pink. <laughs> Mix it into that bit of brown so it's not just pink, but let's give that a little bit of a pink hue. Let's drive that back a little bit more so that you know that's part of the background. And there you have it. We've done a speed painting today of our reference from the color cube. This was card number 70. And I just love the color scheme that we used this limited palette to just create this beautiful morning sunrise over the ocean. I did use acrylic paint and we did a speed painting. So this was done literally in like 20 minutes. So a lot of raw brush marks but you know, it just adds to the whimsical feeling of this beautiful sunrise over the ocean. It really makes me feel like I am there and I really need it at this uh, beautiful vacation vibe for today. So I hope you will be joining me for this week's challenge to paint a beach or ocean scene that fancies you and use a limited palette, maybe even use the one I used over here. So I'm looking forward to see what you will do with this week's prompt. So take a photograph and share it with me on the Creative Heart. It's my private group and there we support each other in our creative practice and journey. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys next week again for another episode of the Creative Heart. 
Thanks for watching. Bye bye for now.